good morning. I am sorry I'm a couple of minutes late. I was having some technical difficulties. Uh, it's just a it's just a COVID kind of morning. So what can I say? Uh, my name is Stephanie Patterson, and I am going to be I'm going to be talking about fasting this morning. And I wish I could tell you that that's one of my absolute favorite things to do, but it really isn't, if I'm honest. And uh, good morning, Moana. That's a pretty name. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Well, okay. Fasting is a spiritual discipline, just like um, prayer and worship and even rest. It is a discipline, but we're going to talk about, I'm for those of you that don't know me, I am a middle school librarian and so I'm all about um, giving people information and inform especially information they can use. Let me just adjust here a second. Okay. All right. Information that they can use. So so a little bit about um, fasting. Let's start with um, I, I learned as I was preparing for um, this lesson this morning that uh, the Hebrew word for fasting literally means to cover the mouth. So, um, to cover the mouth, wow. All right, so <laughs> fasting is, it's, it's complicated, but it's simple at the same time. I mean, but isn't that just like God? I mean, he is simple, but he's complicated. And fasting is similar. So it's a time that you set aside when you need to, when you need God to perform a breakthrough in your life on a spiritual level. So. Uh, I went to one of my favorite people um, to talk about fasting, and that is Dr. Tony Evans. Well, I didn't really like go to him, go to Dallas. I'm, I'm in Georgia. <laughs> I didn't go to him, but I went to one of his books. He has a really, um, he has a great series on fasting and different, ha fasting for different reasons. But um, he also has this really cool ebook that um, talks about fasting. So I'm going to be referring to that some. Uh, as I talked to you this morning. So basically, fasting is the deliberate abstinence from physical gratification, sorry, um, to achieve a, a greater spiritual goal. So let me say that again. So first, it's a time that you set aside when you need God to perform a breakthrough on some spiritual level in your life. And it is the deliberate abstinence from physical gratification in order to receive a greater spiritual goal. So it's denying the flesh, basically, to gain a response from the spirit. Um, that, that's, that's how Dr. Evans puts it. So basically, you're saying no to yourself and yes to God. Um, Dr. Evans says that fasting, that fasting uh, tells God that the cry of our soul is greater than the cry of our stomachs. So you might uh, you might choose to abstain from other activities besides just food during a fast. Um, but a, as we learned last week, a true biblical fast has to do with food. But there are other ways that you can fast. So basically, you want to allow your hunger for God, your your spiritual hunger, to be uh, more focused when you fast. Um, so that it takes place over the physical hunger. So, this, if you're looking for a change or a shift in your spiritual life, ladies, um, fasting may very well be that key. So, it is about focusing on God and His Word. Um, whenever you get the urge to do that thing, whatever it is you're fasting from, whether it's eating or if it's shopping or coffee or t or television or internet then you replace that with you replace doing that activity with spending time with the lord so whether it's reading your bible or praying but the focus is supposed to be about him if you need a breakthrough in your life of any sort uh, financial if you have health issues if you have relationship issues you may need to fast for your children or your husband. Um, you can, they can be the purpose. So I came across um, another lady, her name is uh, an author named Jennifer Kennedy Dean, and she says, 
Um, but that being said, don't don't get me wrong. Well, she doesn't say don't get me wrong. I'm going to paraphrase here. So don't get it twisted. Fasted is not about, um, it's not like a last-ditch last effort to uh, get through to God. It's not a way to manipulate him or it's not a way to... Um, try to get him to do what it is that you need so um he's not it's not about impressing him it's not about um it's, it's not about any of that okay this is about um being closer to him so we do need to to eat obviously to live i mean i don't know about you i, I love food i love to eat and um, our bodies do need food, but many of us have an, an emotional connection to food. Um, we not only eat to survive, but we also eat for pleasure. Uh, we eat when we're bored, we eat when there's something that we just like to eat in our presence. I mean, we don't even have to be hungry. I mean, can I get an amen on that, right? Like, I, I just ate breakfast, but ooh, look, there's donuts at the office, there's donuts at school. Um, so I'm going to have a donut, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we all do that. Or, you know, I already had coffee, but ooh, they're getting Starbucks. So I'm going to have some Starbucks. I mean, we all do it. It's an emotion. It's food is a, a lot of things to a lot of people, but emotions uh, are very heavily tied into food for a lot of us. Comfort food. I mean, why do we have that term if it's not about how you feel, right? So, but fasting takes that focus off ourselves. Uh, it brings humility when your thoughts, it brings humility to your thoughts. When, and when you're not focused on yourself, you become more humble. So Matthew 4, 4 says that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So God's word is food for our spirits. Um, I like to call it soul food. It, it is soul food because it, it feeds our spirits. Fasting takes the focus off feeding your body. And you go to put the focus on feeding your spirit. So what do we know about fasting? From, I mean, from the Bible's point of view, we know that um, Matthew 6, 16 through 18 says, we do not gain attention from, we fast not to gain attention from the world, but from God. Fasting should not be about showing off, y'all. It should, it says, when we, when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you're fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So basically, I know you're going, what do you mean that fasting to get attention from the world? Well, you know, if you are trying to fast because you want to appear very spiritual, super spiritual, or you're trying to fast because you're trying to impress people, uh, gain any kind of attention, that's not the purpose for fast for fasting. Um, people in the Bible fasted for many reasons: um, repent, repentance to break strongholds. Uh, they fasted for their enemies, and they fasted for God's direction and uh, for clarity. Um, it, it does provide clarity. For example, when when King Jehoshaphat was faced with an attack from several surrounding nations he was afraid and he didn't know what to do and the word says for if we are powerless against this the word says we are powerless against this great multitude which is coming against us we do not know what to do but our eyes are on you so king jehoshaphat fasted uh and he called the fast for the entire for all of judah so what was the result of this fast well their enemies um, who were allies of each other ended up turning on one another. Um, Judah was victorious and gained the good, even gained the good. So not only did they were their lives spared, but they also ended up gaining uh, goods, the, the the spoils of the battle that they didn't even fight. They fought each other, and all the weapons and jewelry things are laying around, and they just went and picked up the blessings, if you will. So I mean. Wow, I mean that's a that that's a an answer to prayer if I ever heard one. But we also know that fasting has power, and um, the Bible tells about a boy who was uh, demon possessed, and the disciples were trying to cast this demon out, and they were unable to do it. So when Jesus got involved in it, and he was able to deliver the boy, he the disciples asked why they couldn't, and he said, "This kind only comes out." 
comes comes out by prayer and fasting. So it was a killer combo, prayer and fasting. So obviously, if prayer had been enough, then the disciples would have been able to cast this demon out. But this particular situation called for the combination of prayer and fasting. And you will have situations in your life that call for that combination. Well, how am I supposed to know that? I'm, I'm, nobody I know is possessed. Well, some people might act like it. And maybe some people are. But um, you have to be prayerful. A big part of fasting, guys, there's no, like, recipe, so to speak. There's there's not really a, uh, only you and God know if you, what your intentions are, where your heart is, what you need help with, what you need help with the most, what's most pressing. That's such a personal thing that you and God know. So, um, but I am going to try to help you as much as possible um, this morning, uh, just by giving you some tips. So the very first thing you want to ask yourself is what's my purpose for fasting why am I doing it okay we already talked about not being vain in fasting or not doing it for the attention of man or other people uh, just you know just for whatever reason that's not biblical um, not about God it's about you so it's not don't do that <laughs> but but fasting for spiritual reasons looks different for from fasting from health or weight loss reasons. I know that there's intermittent fasting out there. Um, I've done it. Um, I have friends that participate in it. And it's it's really popular right now, but it, it basically involves not eating specific um, times of the day. So you have a set time that you don't eat from this time to this time. Well, fasting from your spirit is different. It's more than that. It's not about, you know, so you can look good in that bikini this summer or that bathing suit, because I don't do bikinis anymore. I'm a little bit too a little bit too old for that and some other stuff but anyway I digress it's not about being uh, cute for the summer it's it's not it's not about getting your cholesterol down <laughs> even though that's a great thing but that's not what a spiritual fast is about so the word says that man looks at the outer appearance but God looks at the heart so asking God is key your intention is uh, so important and you have to ask God so let's just do a quick fast check okay like what is the focus of your heart that is the question you should be asking what it, what is it that I need what is it that, I, that um, how can I be close to God how can I get his wisdom by focusing on him so it's wisdom to ask God what you are to fast from and what your fast needs to look like and that's what I mean about a formula. Um, it, it's not always the same every time. And God may ask, tell you to fast from something specific. Um, that has happened to me personally. So um, I know that happens. Um, I would just, well, I probably shouldn't tell this story, but I'm going to. I'm, I'm sorry, Jennifer, ahead of time. But this is just truth. If you know me, I'm all about real talk. Um, I had this one um, week where I was fasting uh, actually, I fast every Tuesday, and I'm going to talk to you about that uh, and why. But um, this particular Tuesday, every I got got in the habit of, okay, Lord, how am I fasting today? What do you want me to um, not eat or not drink or what am I doing? So I heard the Lord say to me, okay, y'all, he said, I want you to fast from cussing. Now, I know, I know, I know. He said cussing. He, so a goddess, he, he was speaking Southern to me. And so I was very confused about that because, as I said, I work in a school. And so it's not like, it's like, what? Like, I don't, I don't really, I don't, I'm not a big cusser. And I don't cuss at work. And I'm at work all day, Lord. So, and to be honest, just to be really real, I was like, well, okay. You know, <laughs> in my head, I was like, okay, well, I won't cuss at the job that I don't cuss at anyway okay God and so about probably y'all I promise five minutes later I went into the back closet uh, to get some equipment as I told you I'm a librarian so I was getting some equipment out of the back and I dropped a box on my foot and underneath my breath I, I said I cussed and so um, and I didn't even get it out before God was like 
uh, that's what I'm talking about. I was like, oh, oh, that's what you meant. So you didn't even mean necessarily me just being out there in the world. You meant even in here, in here. So this is about in here and in here too. Okay. Oh, yep. Your ways are higher than my ways and you know me better than I know myself. And that is a testimony. Okay. So just for an example, it was the, it was kind of a strange fast, but that's what it was about. And I think it was more, not necessarily about cussing. I think he just used that to get my attention, but it was like, I want you to pay attention to what's in your mind, how you're thinking, what's in your heart. I want you to put down those negative thoughts. I want you to put down those things that are not like me in your mind and in your heart. And I thought that was, I thought, huh, huh okay. So that was, uh, I wasn't going to tell that story, but it's, it's real talk. <laughs> that's just true. And that's, it's just the truth. So there, I told you I fast every Tuesday and I would tell you why I do that. Um, with my church, uh, I go to Eagles Nest Church in uh, Roswell, Georgia, and uh, we we fast corporately as a church probably a few times a year. Um, I know a lot of churches, I've been members of churches that will fast in January and they'll fast the whole month or they'll fast 40 days. Um, my church, we fast, it's usually for a week and it is, uh, it could be three, to, I mean, it's usually four times a year, sometimes more, it just depends on what's happening with our church and uh, where God, if God leads my pastor to call a corporate fast, then he does. Um, we usually, um, sometimes it looks different. Like I said, every fast is different. I like to say each one has its own personality. There are times that he has, uh, our pastor will give the congregation specific uh, scriptures to focus on or specific topics to focus on. Um, it might be centered around, um, it might be centered around as far as the needs of the church, kind of the same way that Jehoshaphat was seeking uh, God's wisdom in battle. Um, similar to that, he felt the need to call that fast. And so it's, my pa it just depends on what uh, the Lord tells my pastor. Uh, during this time, uh, we are asked to, uh, we're given options of either a, uh, Daniel fast, which is basically eating fruits and vegetables, and you, there's tons of information out there on the Daniel fast, uh, grains, fruits, vegetables, and sticking to that. Um, we have that option. There's also a liquid fast option, and some people choose to do that, where it's, you know, juices, fresh juices, not like Kool-Aid, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like fresh juice. Uh, a lot of people have juicers, and um, so that's another option. And we're always asked to um, abstain from social media uh, as much as possible. I mean, it's kind of hard to avoid the internet altogether these days, especially now during um, COVID. But, um, you know, surfing the web, flipping through Instagram, that kind of thing. You know, the, the kind of time-wasting but fun things we do uh, on social media. So uh, that's with my church. The second um, opportunity I have to fast with my church, I'm a member of the intercessory prayer team, and each week we um, fast in order to prepare for our prayer call. So we have directives that come from our either a different, it's different things, uh, comes from our, some of them come from our pastor, there may be specific um, situations happening at church uh, that maybe the whole congregation doesn't necessarily uh, even need to know about or know about, but uh, things, if we're having issues of some sort. And also sometimes, um, however God leads us to pray uh, about specific things, there is a list that comes out. So on Monday, um, I usually send the list of directives out to the team. We're a very small team. Um, we do not cover the needs of the members we cover the needs of the church. We have another ministry, our pastoral care ministry, that's awesome, that uh, covers member needs, but we're specifically, uh, we are the watchmen, if you will, um, and we cover the needs of the church, the church leadership, because they need lots of covering. Church need, leadership needs lots of covering. So we do that. So in order to prepare for that, we have a, it's a conference call. So Monday, the directives come out and we spend all day Monday praying about those directives, thinking about those directives, asking God about those directives. Tuesday comes, 
and we fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and the call is at 7.30. So um, that's why I say I fast um, often. So my fasts always look different depending on the directives because that's why you have to ask God. If there's a specific directive on there that is calling, it may be calling me, God may be calling me to do something different. Okay, so um, those are, fasting is a big part of my life. Personal fasting, uh, I've done that for myself. If I feel like, as I said, I need clarity on something, if I need a breakthrough, um, my children have driven me to fast. My husband has driven me to fast, y'all. Um, sometimes I've, I've fasted for family members who um, aren't saved. I've fasted for coworkers. Um, so it's just whatever I ask the Lord, if I feel pressed or burdened by something in my, in my spirit, in my heart, and I will ask God, do I need to fast for this? And, you know, of course I pray, but asking about the fasting. So, okay, great, Stephanie. That's, that's awesome. Great. So where do I start? What? Okay. I'll, okay. Maybe I want to do this. So how do I do it? Like, what are the mechanics? And there are some, but as I said, a lot of it's going to be between you and God. And so the, but the very first place you want to start is how establishing how long you want to fast and how you will fast. That's the very first place. Um, well, if you should fast <laughs> and then how long and how. So if you don't, um, now y'all, if you don't like something, it's not fasting when you, you know you don't like broccoli and you're like, I'm going to fast from broccoli. That is not, don't do that. That's, that's, no, don't do that. So, um, that's, yeah, don't, don't do that. That's, that's just not how you do it. <laughs> it kind of defeats the purpose of giving up something. Um, so don't do that. But, um, you want to challenge yourself. So you want to take that time, like I said earlier, that you would normally use doing that thing or eating that thing to pray, to read the word, to worship. So um, how long you're going to fast and how? So biblical, in the Bible, uh, there are examples of one-day fasts in Judges. Um, there's three-day fasts uh, in Esther. Um, there's also a seven-day fast. Uh, there's seven-day fa seven fasts in uh, Samuel. A 10 day fast uh, in the book of Daniel, 14 day fast in the book of Acts, and a 21 day fast um, also in the book of Daniel. So, um, Daniel, um, and with his 21 day fast, as I said, that one in particular, there was no meat, wine, or rich, uh, pe pleasant foods. He stuck to fruits, vegetables, nuts, water. So, um, those are different lengths of fasts in the Bible. And then, of course, there's a 40-day fast. Now, um, that that fast was only mentioned three times in the Bible. Um, Moses uh, was one person, Elijah, and then, of course, Jesus was. So there are those uh, three things, or three, or not three things, but those lengths of fast. So before you fast, don't rush into a fast. Okay, um, things of God are are not confusing or hidden. So just just have a clear purpose. Always begin with prayer before you fast. Ask God how long you should fast and what you should fast for. Listen closely to His answers. This is not a legalistic activity, but an offering to your Savior. So unless God tells you to do otherwise, lady, start small at the beginning. Um, Fast from your coffee, your beloved coffee, if you're like me, it's beloved, or soda, candy, whatever your, your thing is. You know, start small there. And then um, maybe you want to fast from one meal. I mean, that's an option. So we talked about giving up, you know, social media and that kind of thing um, so that you can focus. If you're planning on fasting longer than a day, you might want to start a week or so beforehand and slowly cut back. Um, that way you can work up to the fast. Um, then also remember to not put yourself in places, in situations that are um, tempting, 
Uh, you might want to be thinking about your schedule before. Watch out for sabotage. <laughs> like, um, don't do extra things. Don't schedule a party during a fast <laughs> week, or don't don't um, go out plan to go out to lunch with a friend. Like, watch out for sabotage. Like, work ahead of time to make sure that you're avoiding temptation as much as possible. Um, you also want to plan for your fast. Okay, this is so important, y'all. You want to be sure that you do your grocery shopping. Let's say you're doing Daniel, for example. Go ahead and make a list of, make a meal plan of what you're going to eat and go ahead and get to the store and, and get those things. Um, that's important because if you're hungry or hangry, which can happen during the fast, and you go to the grocery store, you that is the worst. Or being in a situation where you want to just go get something to eat real quick, that can that can be sabotage so try to shop ahead of time plan your meals and shop ahead of time um stock up your kitchen with the things that you need uh, and your pantries with the things that you need so um so before your fast you're going to determine how long what kind and you're going to shop to prepare for your fast okay now during your fast you're going to spend time with god and you're going to read your bible Devotions are great, but don't substitute them for reading the Bible. It might be helpful to plan your soul food menu the way you're planning your physical food menu, okay? Meaning, maybe you uh, decide ahead of time what you're going to pray about it and decide ahead of time what, you're, what passages you're going to be studying. If it's a specific book of the Bible, or if you're like me and you have a study Bible and they have reading plans, um, you could follow one of those during your fast. Um, you want to um, you want to maybe employ something like the soap method, which I do, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But journaling is very important during a fast, um, if you can. Um, some people don't don't care for journaling, but I find it therapeutic. It's a very great suggestion if you want to. Um, buy a special journal for fasting. It could be a spiral notebook. It doesn't have to be fancy. If you want to just have a separate journal for fasting, separate from your prayer journal, if you have one, then that's an option. Um, the SOAP method is great. So what, what that involves, and I'll put that in the notes, is first, S is for scripture. So you decide your passage that you're going to study. O is observation. So you write down what you're going to observe. Is anything repeated? What sticks out to you? Um, application. How is this passage applied to you? How can you use the scripture in your life and how can you respond to the verses? And then P, P is prayer, for prayer, asking God to reveal his heart to you and give you guidance in applying this word to your life. So you wanna spend some time listening to God. Sit quietly and just listening. Um, you're praying, you're reading your Bible, you're journaling, you're listening for, for God's voice. You're just listening. Um, and add any insights to your journal. So avoid distractions as reasonably as possible. And we talked about that. Jesus and Luke, uh, Luke says that he it says that Jesus went to, to with, sorry, Jesus withdrew to faraway places in order to pray. So he had to get away from distraction. So if Jesus had to get away from distraction, you need to get away from distraction. So you want to drink plenty of water during your fast. So if you're on a liquid fast, um, you might want to try to drink. Um, liquids at the time you would eat so that you're not just in this constant perpetual state of hunger <laughs> that you can kind of keep a routine for yourself. Um, you also want to break your fast with prayer so when your fasting time is done you want to be sure and do that. Um, also avoid gorging yourself so that you don't uh, make yourself sick. <laughs> uh, those are some tips uh, that I have found very helpful in fasting. Also, if you decide that you are going to fast more regularly, if, like I was telling you, I fast um, once a week uh, on a specific day. My father-in-law was the first person I knew who did that, and he, he fasts every Wednesday for his children and his uh, grandchildren, which includes me, he let me know. So, um, all of us. And so it's nice to know that someone is um, purposely and intentionally covering you in prayer um, each day of the week. I know on Wednesday if I'm having a crazy day then 
I know I'm being covered by my father-in-law. It's, it's, it's nice. But um, when you do fast regularly, you want to avoid a fasting rut. Don't get into a rut where you're like, okay, it's Wednesday. I'm not eating meat. Okay, it's, you know, I'm not doing this. It's because it's supposed to be about you and the Lord. It's supposed to be about asking God's guidance. And as I told you about my, my, my cousin in the closet story, he may ask you to fast from something that you didn't even realize that you were doing or maybe that you were dependent upon. You know, the word says that God is a jealous God. And so he, is, he doesn't want anything in your life to be more important than he is. And he may point you at, point out some things to you that you didn't, just didn't realize that you were maybe putting in a place where he should be. So you want to be very prayerful. That is so, so, so key. Okay. Um, I hope I, there's so much more <laughs> that I could tell you um, about fasting. It's a very deep, deep subject. But um, I hope that the tips will help you. Um, just a quick recap, y'all. I mean, just... Before, decide how long, decide what kind, plan for yourself as far as meals and even as far as you're studying if you, you know, if you're that type of person. I mean, some people just can flip and say, I want to study this. I, I'm not built that way. I need, you know, librarians like order. So <laughs> I like to plan as much as possible because it, it for me, it, it it's a better chance of me being successful at what I'm trying to do. So planning um, is key. And always, always pray. Ask God. Seek his guidance. So I'm just going to pray for you now so that um, you can get on about your days. And um, if you have any questions about fasting or um, if you, I mean, just put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Um, and some of the other uh, leaders uh, can answer them as well. Uh, but we're going to go to the God, to God in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to draw near to you, Lord God. We thank you for the opportunity to fast. We thank you for um, wanting to spend time with us, wanting to be closer to us. Lord, we seek your wisdom in all things because you know all things. You um, know the plans that you have for our lives, Lord God. And so often we are remiss in asking you what your plan is as we go about our day and we have our plans, we have our errands, we have our things to do, Lord God. And so often we don't remember to ask you what your plan is for that day or for us. So Lord, I just pray right now that um, some of my sisters today would be inspired, Lord, too fast to turn off their flesh father god so, and turn up the volume of their spirit father god by fasting and being closer to you lord god i pray for their fasts that they are uh, that they find success in them lord god that they that they find closeness to you lord god that they even find that they have more time than they think they do to spend with you lord god when they arrange their lives differently Lord, we just love you, and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you ahead of time before. Some of us may be fasting now, but for those who haven't started, Lord God, we just thank you for that time that they're going to spend with you. Father, you are so good to us. We love you, and we thank you. We are so appreciative, Lord God, of the time that you spend with us, and we ask you to draw our hearts closer to you, knit us to you, Father God. Let, give us wisdom, your wisdom, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, hope that was helpful, guys. Um, I will talk to you all later. Bye.